Man feeds dirty homeless old lady in luxury restaurant. The next day, her life changed forever. Chester Holland was on his way to a luxury restaurant when he noticed Martha curled up in the middle of the street, begging passersby for food. The man felt sorry for her and offered her help, but there was more to why his gaze was instantly drawn to her. Chester Holland was a lawyer by profession, and he owned one of the most prestigious law firms in New York called Holland & Partners. The man was quite handsome even at 70, with hazelnut eyes and a grayish tinge to his hair, but unfortunately, law studies never gave him the time to use his charm, and as a result, Chester had neither a wife nor children. His only housemate was his cook Arthur, who would look after his meals and sometimes listen to his courtroom stories in his free time. However, after Arthur requested a vacation, Chester decided that it was better to eat at a restaurant than to use his excellent cooking skills and adorn the kitchen with food waste. As a result, this evening he was on his way to Le Bernardin to enjoy a hearty meal. However, just as he crossed the first street after his house, he noticed Martha curl up in a corner. It was snowing, and the woman was shivering, staring at everyone with needy eyes, but everyone turned a deaf ear to her. Chester was moved by her innocent eyes, just like the ones he'd seen a few years ago, and decided to approach her. Hey, my name is Chester. Would you like to join me for dinner tonight? He asked gently. Martha, who had been starving for days, was taken aback when she saw the man dressed in a tuxedo approach her and invite her to dine with him. Well, I'd love to, she admitted, fighting back the tears at his generosity. However, I am perplexed as to why you would assist a homeless woman like me. Well, I'm dining alone tonight and I'd love to have someone's company, he explained. So shall we go. Martha thanked him once more for his assistance and accompanied him to the restaurant. But the moment she took a seat in the luxurious establishment, the guests began mocking her. Oh my goodness, who is she? And what is she doing in such a high-end restaurant? Yelled one of the ladies at the front table. I know, right. I wonder how they let her in. Just look at her. She's dressed shabbily and stinks of garbage meat, another complained. I would have kicked her out of here in no time. One of them just crossed the line and went ahead and called the manager. She doesn't belong here, Mr. Smith, she told him. I have been a customer at this restaurant for years now. I didn't know you'd allow anyone from the streets to just walk in like that. You better get rid of her right now. Tired of hearing the complaints and visitors looking disgustedly at Martha, Mr. Smith approached Chester's table and asked him to escort the woman out. I'm sorry, sir, but your companion needs to leave. Our other customers are voicing their dissatisfaction, and we can't let that go. Chester gave him a cold stare. Well, you don't have the right to kick her out. She'll be staying with me. Please don't force me to call security, sir, Mr. Smith cautioned. If you don't comply, I'll have to kick you out. Are you sure? Chester burst out laughing. Do you understand the law, Mr. Chester examined Mr. Smith's uniform badge. Yeah, Mr. Jason Smith, Chester went on. I hope you're familiar with the law. If not, you are welcome to visit my office. It's also not difficult to find because I'm assuming you've heard of Holland and Partners. Please take this. Chester handed over his business card that bore his name. Mr. Smith's eyes widened. Oh, I am sorry, sir. He immediately apologized. I didn't know you were a lawyer. I apologize for the inconvenience. It's all right, Mr. Smith, Chester said. Now, I'm hoping you'll send us a waiter instead of wasting my time judging me. I'm already running late for dinner. Sure, sir. I'll send one of our waiters right away. I'm sorry again, Mr. Smith said and walked away. As a waiter approached Chester's table, he placed an order and apologized to Martha. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Perhaps I should have looked for a better restaurant. Oh no, it's not your fault, Martha said. In fact, I am grateful to you for your help. I hope I can return the favor someday. Well, you're already doing me a favor by giving me company tonight, so don't feel embarrassed about anything, Chester said with a smile. Soon, the waiter brought them their food, and while Martha ate, Chester couldn't take his gaze away from her. She really hadn't eaten in days. It's good that I found her and brought her here. Chester thought to himself. Suddenly, Martha looked up and caught him staring. What's wrong? Why are you looking at me like that? She inquired, her mouth still filled with food. Is there something on my face? Chester smiled at her. Do you really not remember me, Martha? Martha was stunned. What? Have we met before? Yes, Martha, we did, Chester said. It all happened 38 years ago. I was a broke student who was evicted because I couldn't pay my rent. I went inside a cafe hoping to get at least warm. You worked as a waitress there. I was afraid I'd be escorted out, but instead, you offered me food and didn't charge me a dime. I refused to give up that day. I applied for internships and eventually landed a position at a law firm. Because of you, I now own one of New York's most prestigious law firms. Chester's eyes welled up as he continued. I recognized you right away when I saw you on the street. 
You know I returned to that cafe looking for you, but they informed me that you had been fired. Ah, now I remember you, Martha said, and she started to tear up. Actually, one of my colleagues complained to my boss about helping you. I was fired, and it took me a long time to find another job. Everywhere I went, I found part-time work, so I survived for a while, but all that hard work took its toll on me, and I ended up losing everything from my health to my home. Well, if you don't mind, you can stay at my house, Chester offered. Think of it as a way for me to repay you for your kindness. Reflecting upon how she'd been living her life for almost a year, Martha accepted Chester's offer and moved in with him. And finally, a few years down the line, what began as an encounter for helping out a broke student turned into love, and the couple recently decided to tie the knot. Martha is now preparing to open her restaurant in New York. In another heartwarming story, a rich man defends a little girl begging near shop, realizes he had seen her emerald eyes before. A rich man rescues a poor little girl begging outside a city mall when a guard threatens to kick her out. However, when he gets a better look at her, he's bewildered by her huge, innocent emerald eyes, which he recognizes from somewhere else. Businessman Tyler Fisher couldn't believe his eyes when he saw a little girl begging passers buy for money in front of a downtown shop. The guards threatened her, but she refused to leave and remained seated on the stairwell. A guard eventually grabbed her arm and began dragging her down the steps. The poor girl started crying, and Tyler just couldn't stop himself from helping her. Excuse me, sir, he called out to the guard. Please calm down and leave that little girl alone. Oh man, grumbled the guard as he turned around. You haven't met this little brat. She comes here every day and annoys everyone who visits the shop. Take my advice and just leave. Don't waste your time on her. It's fine, sir, Tyler assured him patiently. I'll take care of her. Ew, man, really? Why are you about, okay, do whatever you want, but I don't want to see her bothering anyone else again. If I do, I'll kick her out, he muttered as he walked away. Tyler knelt to face the little girl, who was standing with her head bowed, sobbing, her long hair strewn across her face, and her skin as pale as if all the blood had been sucked from her body. Hello there, my name is Tyler, and you are. My name is Sophie, the little girl said, brushing away her tears. So Sophie, what are you doing here by yourself? Where are your mom and dad? I'm begging for money. My baby brother is hungry, and mommy is sick. Daddy went to the angel. Ah, I see. Don't worry, Sophie. I will help you. Tyler smiled brightly at her. How about I help you buy some food for your younger brother and new clothes for yourself? Your clothes appear to be soiled. There's a mall right here. Would you like to come with me? He asked, extending his hand for her to hold. Sophie glanced up at him with her large, innocent eyes, wiped her tears, and moved the hair strewn across her face, showing her deep emerald eyes. When Tyler saw her eyes, he almost froze in place and couldn't take his gaze away from her. He realized he had seen those eyes long ago when he was a fresh grad. Really? Sophie asked, cutting his thoughts in between. Will you really help me? Oh, uh, what? Yeah. Yeah, I will. Thank you. You are sweet, just like my mommy. Sophie responded as she held his hand and walked with him to the mall. Tyler got her new clothes and shoes and baby food for her brother. As he was paying at the cashier, he noticed Sophie staring at a little boy who was eating ice cream with his parents. The way she was looking at him made Tyler realize she may not have eaten in days, if not weeks. So, after shopping, he took her to a restaurant and ordered her a huge cheeseburger and a chocolate shake. Sophie pounced on the food as soon as it arrived, and Tyler couldn't take his gaze away from her, particularly her eyes. Where do you live, Sophie? He gently asked as she finished her meal. Is it close to the shop where you were sitting earlier? Yes, the girl nodded, slurping the last drop of the chocolate shake. If you're done, shall we head to your home now? Your mommy must be worried. Okay, she said cheerfully as he got on her foot. Tyler drove her home, and when he saw the dilapidated structure Sophie's family lived in, he couldn't help but feel bad for her. Please wait here while I call Mommy, she chirped and dashed inside. Mommy, come out. Tyler could hear her voice getting fainter. It took two minutes before Sophie's mother emerged from inside, carrying a small baby in her arms. Tyler dropped the shopping bags from his hands when he saw her. She appeared fragile and destitute, but she wasn't a stranger to him. She was his first love, Anne, who had the same emerald eyes as Sophie. Oh, oh my gosh, Anne, is that really you? He cried, his eyes widening with shock. I thought you'd moved abroad with your husband. That's what your landlord told me. Tyler, I can't believe you're here. How, how did you find my house? She asked, a little embarrassed by her circumstances. What happened to you, Anne? And why is Sophie begging on the streets? Do you have any idea where I found her? She was sitting outside a shop, begging for money. What? Anne's eyes welled up with tears. I didn't know that. 
she told me she was going outside to play. Clearly, that isn't the case. Sophie shouldn't have to do all of that. What happened? Please don't feel bad about anything and just let me know. Please. Well, would you mind coming in? I'm not feeling well, so I can't stand for very long. Oh, all right. Stepping inside, Tyler could see Anne's home was in desperate need of repair. The entire house had only one room with a small space in a corner shared equally by the kitchen and a small table piled with dirty plates. There was a filthy mattress in the middle of the room where he assumed they slept in a worn-out couch in another corner. It's a long story, Taylor, Anne remarked, her eyes welling up. My husband and I had moved abroad, but we came back after a few years. We moved in with my in-laws, but after he died of a heart attack six months ago, my in-laws kicked me out, leaving me with nowhere to go. I worked really hard for my children, which took a toll on my health, but I didn't care. I kept working to the point I was bedridden. Anyways, how about you? I thought you'd left town for higher studies. I had. Then I returned to find you. However, it was too late. You'd already been married. Ah, I see. So you, um have a wife and kids too. Of course not, Annie. Remember I had promised you I would marry you. I haven't broken it. I was waiting for you. To be honest, I'm ready to look after you and your kids. I've met Sophie, and I'd love to have a daughter like her. Slow down, Tyler. I need some time to consider this. You know, everything just happened so quickly, and... Take your time, Anne, he said. But please, you're not staying here any longer. You guys are coming with me. Sophie deserves to go to school and study rather than beg, and you deserve a better life. I'm not asking you to rush into anything. You have plenty of time to consider what you want. Anne didn't want to agree to Tyler's request to move in with him, but he insisted, so she had no choice but to comply. The next day, he helped her move her belongings from her previous house to his, and Annie observed that he hadn't changed a bit in years. Tyler was still the same kind, caring man who would do everything for her. He accompanied her to doctor's visits and cared for her, attended Sophie's school functions as a parent, and even took care of baby Kevin. After seeing his love and dedication, Anne couldn't help but fall in love with him again. Six months down the line, she proposed to him, and Tyler, of course, nodded a yes. They decided to tie the knot in an intimate ceremony in a small church. Little Sophie was more than happy to have Tyler as her new dad, and Tyler and Anne were glad they were finally together.